I don't know why, and I don't know how, but I think I died today. Gavin is a perceptive guy. He looks at this problem from every angle. Where is his body, for instance? Why doesn't he see anything or feel anything? Hear, smell. Where has the world gone? He doesn't have a clue what happened. He doesn't remember anything. Surely there would have been a warning sign, something that cried out, Mayday! Mayday! Brace yourself! But there was nothing. He traces his final hours as best he can. Last night, he watched some TV, then sat on his deck for a while, hoping to see a deer that had been roaming the neighborhood. Drank a Rohrbox Scotch Ale. When the grandfather clock struck nine, he went upstairs, took a bath, and was in bed by ten. Read until he couldn't see the words anymore. Was asleep by eleven, eleven fifteen at the latest. Woke up at three to take a leak. Stood at the bathroom window for several minutes, watching the full moon appear and disappear behind thin clouds. Slipped back into bed without disturbing Frankie. He listened for a while to her raspy breathing, her mouth open a crease, her hair mussed around her face. Smiled and went back to sleep. His iPhone alarm went off at six. He woke up alert, refreshed, and ready for the day. He stood in front of the mirror, assessing his face, his rounded cheeks and small chin, his narrowly set eyes and high forehead, thinning brown hair. Each morning, he hoped he would see something different. But alas. He shaved, got dressed in tan dockers, a check shirt, and work casual shoes. As he reviews the previous twelve hours, he tries to remember if there was anything odd that he might be overlooking. Unexpected indigestion or dizziness or breathlessness that had come and gone? But there wasn't anything. For breakfast, he had an English muffin, dry, and then a cup of coffee, black. By then, Frankie was up, sitting at her makeup table, putting her face on. She was humming something. What was it? He leaned over and kissed the nape of her neck. She shivered. Goodbye, Gavin. Goodbye, sweetheart. He drove the Infinity this morning. He turned on Morning Edition and eased on to the expressway heading east to the city. Traffic was traffic, but it didn't bother him, even when a Mini Cooper almost nudged him off the road. He was busy whistling, nothing in particular, just practicing how high he could go. He got off at the usual exit and took the usual shortcut through Highland Park, enjoying the proud elms. Stopped for another coffee at the corner cafe. What the heck? He was feeling good because the barista, maybe 20 years old, complimented his shirt. You just made my, well, month. He got to the lot 40 minutes early. He plunked down in his cubicle before anyone else arrived placed his coffee on the blotter, pulled up the blinds to get a full dose of the rising sun, booted his computer, took a few files from the cabinet beside his desk, and dove into some insurance claims. He shrugs, or imagines he shrugs, as he considers his morning. Ordinary is the one word he can think to describe it. Something must have gone terribly wrong, because he isn't in his office. He isn't even in his body. He isn't anywhere at all. By the same token, he isn't gone either. He's bewildered. Where the heck am I? What's going on? He thinks back a little further, searching for clues. Last Tuesday, he saw Dr. Nien for his annual. Blood test, prostate exam, not a fan. Ticker check, everything was normal. You are in good shape for your age, Mr. Good, said the doctor. What does that mean, thought Gavin. Someone my age? I'm 52, which isn't young, I'll grant you that, but it's not old, not these days. Maybe in my old man's time, but not today. Fifty has to be the new something younger.